Welcome to my first life ever. So if anything goes wrong or sounds different or doesn't come out the way I want it, yes, bear with me because this is my first life ever. Um, if you've been following my channel, you know who I am. Uh, if you're new here, my name is Edgar Rodriguez and this here, here is Kip, my service dog. Uh, Kip and me, uh, we've been a team for three years now and today we're going to talk actually about that, about my experience with Kip as a service dog, but not only Kip, but a German Shepherd in, as a service dog. So we're gonna talk about, we cover, we're gonna cover everything that is good, everything that is bad about it. Uh, there's some things that I don't like much and there's thing I love it about having a German Shepherd as a service dog. But we're gonna talk, start with service, uh, with German Shepherds as a breed, because today, even though we are talking about one individual right there, we're talking about you today, so we're talking about this particular individual that I have three years of experience with him. It doesn't mean every gem, particular German Shepherd will behave the same way. But as a breed, they all have traits that are really similar. Like they have a high play, uh, prey drive. They're really smart dogs. Those are things that every German Shepherd is gonna have in them. Even though sometimes we're gonna find one individual that doesn't have so much play drive, but in general, every German Shepherd is gonna have those, um, those behaviors. A German Shepherd was created to work in the farm. And I wanna put this clear right here. I'm talking about my experience. I'm not an expert in dog behavior, um, not an expert in in, in, in general, I'm not a professional. I'm just somebody who has a service dog and sharing my knowledge that I accumulated in the last three years. And I hope this information help you make the right decision if you are thinking about getting a German Shepherd or maybe clarify some of the things that are happening to you today and maybe you can make it better with my experience sharing it with you. So going back to the German Shepherd as a breed, uh, one thing they have uh, is they shed a lot. Almost all German Shepherds are going to shed a lot. So that's something they all share. 
And one of the things that, I'm, one of the, my least favorite things is the shedding. And we're gonna talk about why it's, I mentioned this at the beginning, why it's so important, even that it's so, so natural that the dogs shed, but Jim and Shepard really, really shed. So talking about um, the breed in general, they always been working. So they really like to work, they're hard worker, high, like I say, really high prey drive, really protective. They used to work in the beginning uh, when they were created in farms and then they actually were military and then police and service dog. In this, now they don't use it so much as a service dog and we're gonna talk a couple of the reasons why. Um, actually one of the most important one is that German Shepherds are beautiful they love the whole family but they are they are one person dog so they're going to attach to you like velcro anywhere you go this the german shepherd is going to go with you this is something really good um, when you have a service dog but at the same time it can be make it a little hard when somebody else train your dog so somebody else trained a service german shepherd service dog and then it has to transfer that dog to the owner, and then that's when the problem starts. It gets a little bit harder than it, maybe a golden retriever or a Labrador, which are a lot easier to transfer to another person. At the same time, if you train your dog, if you train your German Shepherd, they're gonna be attached to you. That bond is gonna be really strong, and that is really good. But we have to take in consideration the German Shepherd are protective. So in general, okay, this is we're talking about the breed right now. We're not talking about individuals because this guy here might not be as protective as others, uh, but his his, his genes is to be a protective dog. So that is really important when you're thinking about getting a German Shepherd as a uh, service dog. So there's two kinds of um, German Shepherds. Two, in, in the German Shepherd breed, there's two kinds. There's the working line and is the um, show line. Kip is a, uh, he's a working line. I mean, you may be seeing the police officers has dogs that look like him. Um, the German Shepherd working line and the this is a Malinois, the Virgin Malinois are the number two dogs that police use in these days because their intelligence, their play, prey drive, and their protective nature. These three things are the biggest uh, traits in German Shepherds and makes them who they are. But it's like going to work in a racing car every day. You, sometimes you don't want to drive a racing car to go to work. These dogs are fast in general. Um, they are willing to work and never get tired. So these things are great for service dog, but at the same time can become too much. So that's those are the little things that I want to share with you today in about Gem and Shepherds in my experience and what things I don't like about those and when I don't like them. So let's go back to the shedding uh, and why shedding it's a, it could become a problem when the dog is shed a lot. And the reason is if you need a service dog it's because sometimes you can't do things on your own and the service dog will do it for you. That's one reason. In my case, mine is a medical alert dog. So we alert, he will alert when I need to take a medication and it's a little bit different. But sometimes I won't be, I I'm, might not be able to do the things that I want to, like cleaning the fur, because I'm not feeling well. And when the dog like this one sheds so much, it can become, I mean, overwhelming sometimes. So you have to have some members of your family that are willing to help you with that. Every dog will shed. Set poodles. Uh, poodles, they don't shed. If they do, it's too little. And it's because their hair continues to grow and you have to cut it. Uh, with every other dog, they will shed the, the, all, uh, fe um, the all hair and it will grow again. So it's a little bit different. But German Shepherd really shed a lot. So one of the things that um, when you have a really high prey dog like a German Shepherd is that they're always active. Well, right now he looks like an angel, like nothing is going on. This dog has to go to the park every day and I throw the ball um, maybe for 30, 45 minutes. We're playing hard in the park or training 
and keeping that keeping uh, tired satisfied with exercise. This is not the dog that you see every day. He will be really active. The, he's well trained, and when he's in place, like he's here now, I mean, he's gonna sit there for as long as I ask him to sit there. He might because this is my office. He might get up on his own because he have a lot more freedom when we in here, but. This is not a normal behavior that you're gonna see in the house on a regular basis, especially if he have if he hasn't exercised enough uh, during the week. And when I say during the week, it's actually daily. Um, yesterday we didn't go. I had a bad migraine, so we didn't go to work out yesterday, and we haven't gone yet. Uh, we haven't go yet today. We're gonna go after this. After we finish here, we're gonna go to the park. But if we don't do this, I mean, he will definitely. Uh, drive me crazy, uh, jumping all around the house, bringing me things, bringing me whatever he can find, any toy he can find, he's going to bring it to me, put it in my lap, and cry. And when we talk about cry, Jeb and Shepard has that particular, their particularity, that they, they uh, make a lot of noise, uh, they get excited. Uh, a minute ago, I was training, playing with him here, he wasn't making any noise, but if he gets really excited, he will make a noise. And this I didn't notice. I notice it as much in the beginning, but one of my viewers pointed out that we were training at the mall and he started making noises and I, I, I barely pay attention to it. When she pointed out, I noticed it, that he makes noise every time he gets excited. Sometimes it's hard not to notice that he's getting excited. Like if we go into the park and he knows I'm getting ready to leave, he will start making a lot of noise at the door. He would, he would down on command and stay there, open the door, but he knows we're going to the park and he will, he will be making a lot of noise. Um, and Kip in particular, don't bark a lot. Actually, if we put him in the backyard and we hear that he barks, we run really quick because something's going on. He never actually uh, barks unless something important is happening. So let's go back to the the getting a no get a bad start thinking about getting a gem and shepherd if you're thinking about getting gem and shepherd the first thing you have to think in consideration is where you're going to get the gem and shepherd uh and the reason for this is because many people love gem and shepherd you're going to see a lot of people growing uh racing gem and shepherds in the backyard the, the, the uh, backyard breeders and there's nothing wrong with that i mean you can do as you wish but if you're looking for a service dog, especially a German Shepherd, you really need to find a really good breeder, responsible breeder that is going to breed with uh, with something in mind, with some intention. Of it's going to be a working line uh, German Shepherd, like Kip is a working line for sports, uh, IPO, shit. Some if that's that, this breeder is going to be breeding with certain um, certain particular. Uh, behaviors that they want in the dog for the sport. Kip comes from a breeder who breeds a lot for IPO and that's one of the reasons he's like super super hyper and has all this uh, play drive and he will go for the ball for hours non-stop which is a good thing when it comes to training if you uh, see when I was training him and we're gonna play a little bit here for you uh, now we're working really for treats, keep coming, and he's really willing to work for food, but he's really, go place, place, but he's also uh, will play and follow my hand the same way, actually more if I'm holding a toy. Uh, we toys, I don't have one here anyway, I wouldn't even try to play with him right now with a toy in here because he would get really, really excited and it might break my whole office in pieces. So all this you need to think about if you're getting a service dog that is a gem and shepherd because you're gonna have to put, get, put time aside to not only train, but to work with this dog, play with this dog enough every day so you can have a normal life. Um, everybody, every time we go out to the store, they, even my family, they make fun of me because they, because they say, that's not a dog that we know at the house, at the house, he actually wants to be playing around unless he's working. 
Um, okay, so gem and chippers are it's really smart. And golden retrievers are very smart. And uh, poodles are really smart. That's why they're being used for, for service dogs. But when you have a dog that is really smart, you need to be doing things with that dog because otherwise the dog will get bored. And I know if you have a service dog, he's going to be going places with you and moving around. But if you're not doing much in a couple of days, and then it becomes a problem. You want to go ahead and have a routine that you can do every day to keep his mind exercised. Because we tend to, I tend to throw the ball and that will be a physical exercise, but that actually is not going to get him as tired if I, if I do a physical exercise and then I do mentally exercise. Actually, I do it all the way around. I start with training, so we do a lot of what you saw me doing right now between my legs. We call it Sue. Uh, I do a lot of healing. We play with that. I take the ball, making do healing. And after we work a little bit with training, and then we play with, I start throwing the ball and getting his body tired. Even if, if we in the house, I never play rough in the house. I don't throw toys in the house. Uh, I try not to play talk in the house. Actually, I could say I'm 99% good not playing talk, talk in the house. It's because I want Kip to understand that in the house, he he's not allowed to play rough. But he will bring the toys, trying to play uh, a talk or a fetch, but we nobody in my family is allowed to do so. So what we do is um, we play with food. And I use the street, uh, this... This show has been, uh, we, I don't have a sponsor, I haven't been paid by this company. I just use this uh, product a lot. I love it. I mean, the, the reason I love it is because of the shape and they're really dry. They don't get my hand wet. Um, they don't really smell much unless you get a salmon one. That Those smells a lot in your hands. They smelling like salmon, but we do this. Uh, my wife, she would take crackers and bread. I don't recommend you do that to a service dog, but she play with him and she use crackers and things like that. But every time we give him food or something, he needs to do some type of work for us, especially when he's with me. If he wants something to eat from me, he will have to do something. We have to down, sit, come between my legs, do healing, do the most, most of the things that we do when we out uh, and about and then I want him to be like really, really good at it. And those are the main things. Sometimes we want to get like really uh, fancy with our service dog, doing all these tricks. And um, service dog actually don't um, don't need to do many tricks. They need to heal really well. They need to sit and stay sit, down and stay down. In my case, it's really comfortable for me that he's between my legs because we take really little space. Uh, together, so it's really important that he knows that really well. Uh, uh, he needs to know how to get under a table and stay there, uh, under a chair and stay there, and definitely sit or down, but away from where I'm at. I slow and stay there until I ask him to move. For me, those are the most important training pieces. I mean, if your dog do specific things for you, like opening a door, uh, getting your keys when you drop them, that's that's really, um, really personal. In my case, he's a medical alert, so I don't need those things. I can pick up my own keys. I can open my own doors. I need him to be attentive to my illness and let me know on time. That is important, so we will train on that. Um, but other than that, I don't, we don't do fancy things. So what I do is to keep him busy and tired is do those things as, as much as possible. Uh, okay, my daughter's not here. She's shopping and she's watching and making comments here. So thank you, Ella. Say hi to Ella whenever you're here. If you, if you see this video later on, you can go ahead and comment on her comment. That's here, my daughter, uh, right here. Let me see if I can pull your comment, Ella, right here. Thank you, Ella. I love you. So that's my daughter, a uh, faithful follower. So let's go back to Gem and Shepherds. Why would you want to get a Gem and Shepherd instead of another breed? I don't know. Honestly, I don't know. Um, I got a Gem and Shepherd because I was in love with the breed. Uh, Kip, it's my... What's Kip? Place. Come on, man. He was on the floor. 
So what are you about to see you? Um, Kip is my first German Shepherd, and I just got a German Shepherd because I fall in love with the breed. No other reason. Um, yes, I knew they were good for easy to train. That I, I did all my homework and find a good breeder, all the things we've been talking here. But there was no a real reason why to get Yemen Shepherd. I'm 51 years old. I just turned 51 uh, last week on the 24. And honestly, if I will, when I get another gem, another uh, service dog, it won't be a German Shepherd. It will be too much dog for me. At that point, uh, there's days that I can do play with Kip as much as I want to. So I'd be thinking more like a Golden Retriever or a Poodle. I don't like Poodles that much, but Golden Retriever. That will be the, my, my next service dog. And reasons why. Uh, we talk about how hyper they are, right? How much they have to play, how much they shed. That's the bad thing. I love I love Kip, so Kip don't get offended. I love Kip because he is with me all the time. He's a great dog, even though he's too active. But there's one point we haven't touched today is perception. Uh, what all the people think about when you walk around with a German Shepherd. And that's really important because I haven't had any issue going to places and being stopped uh, uh, because of my service dog. Only one time I did. And... Um, but the rest of the time, it's it's actually easy for me. But honestly, I recommend, that's one thing, the perception of people in the street, because they get scared when they see Kip. Kip is an 85-pound dog, big head. I mean, you can see him. He's huge. Um, he's huge. And, I mean, anybody can get scared of Kip. He wouldn't do nothing, but people get scared. So that's one thing you have to take in consideration. When you go places... The, the perception of the dog matters uh, in the way they treat you and the way that lets you in with no question asked. And this is really important for us uh, teens with service dogs because we already have a dog with us. And I know it sounds, for some people, if you don't have a service dog, it might sound like, oh, it's beautiful to have your dog with you all the time. I personally, I don't think so. I mean, that's remember, this is my own opinion. I don't think it's so comfortable to go everywhere with my dog. I don't feel that it's easy to every time I go out, go out with a dog. Uh, and sometimes I even leave him home because for me, it's, I don't think it's that comfortable. If I'm going to be out of the house for a little while, and then definitely he's going to be with me because I'd rather have him and prevent uh, my illness than not have him with me. But it's something you have to think about. German Shepherd has that impression in people. Another thing is definitely they are protective dogs. So they're gonna be, he's gonna be attentive. I mean, right now he's relaxed right here. I mean, too relaxed, actually. He just passed out. But normally if we out, he's not that relaxed. He looks more like this. Kip, he looks more like that, attentive. Ears up, looking around. That's the dog you're going to see when we out. He's not always like fully relaxed unless he's under a table. We're winging in that place for a while and then you're going to see what you're seeing right now. But in general, he will be paying attention what's moving around. And that's something that if you have a golden retriever or a gold a Labrador or a poodle, one of those three. I know there's, there's five main ones, but I don't, I, don't, I don't remember the other ones right now out of the top of my head. Um... The people are gonna relax around them. The golden retriever might be more aggressive than than Kip, but they will relax around him because they they expect that dog to to be uh, somebody that's not gonna harm them. But Kip is don't don't give that impression. Spend uh, uh, between socialization and your puppy. Okay, we have a good question right here. Uh, I can't read your name, so it's right here. Okay, um, th th this is a great question. When to start socialization and when should we <laughs> start socialization? This goes for every dog. Uh, it goes between two months and five months. That's the best time to do it. And this goes, this goes with every dog. It's a, it's, it's a window that opens and closes. It doesn't mean that you cannot socialize socialize your dog after that, but it doesn't going to be as good as you doing doing that window. When it comes with Yemen Shepherds, this is your main training when you get your dog. 
you need to be socializing your dog every day. And okay, let, let me tell you what happened to me and how complicated can this become. If you go to the vet and bring your dog, he's gonna say, you can't bring your dog to the street or public places until he don't get all his vaccines when he's six, seven months and given 30 days after the last vaccine. At that point, the window is closed. And if you have a German Shepherd, this is the most important training, period. That's it. And then if they, that window closed, and then what happened? So what I did, okay, and this is my expert opinion. Now, that's my personal opinion. I took it to Lowe's. Lowe's is a, a hardware place here in the United States. You can go to Lowe's or Home Depot. And I will carry Kip, he, he weighed like 10 pounds back then, 15 pounds. I will pick him up, carry the dog, put him inside a basket in the grocery store. I mean, on the at Lowe's or Home Depot, they allow you to do this. Don't do this at the grocery store. And actually it's breaking every rule in the United States. If you put a dog in the grocery store's basket, you can't do that. Um, but if you go to Lowe's or Home Depot, because they're pet friendly, you put your dog in the basket and then you go around the place, the store. People don't have to touch the dog to be socialized. So what I did was, I didn't allow people to touch him. He had a sign that says, don't pet. I will go around people and I will choose the people or the people who were polite and ask me, can I pet your dog? And then I will stop with that person. I make the dog look at me, I will give the dog treats, the person touch the dog, and I continue to be the most important person in this uh, interaction. I don't I don't let the dog go to the person and have fun like, like he's in Disney World. No, he has to keep paying attention to me while the uh, person is uh, petting him. After that, um, Lowe's have baskets, uh, not baskets, they have these flat cards. So I will put him on the flat card because he was bigger now, I put it in a flat car and I will do the same thing. I will go to the dog parts. Um, even though I don't like dog parts, and I know we're talking about you don't want your dog to step, especially in dog parts, dog park. So what I do was I open my trunk, uh, have an SUV, so I open the back and I will sit back there. He could smell the, the environment. He could see all the dogs running and barking, people walking in and walking out. People confuse socialization with touching. You, your dog doesn't have to touch the other dog to socialize with dogs. Your dog doesn't have to touch the person to be socialized with people. So take that out, just bring it to public places as much as you can. Don't let the dog touch the floor until he don't get all his vaccines. Uh, last but not least, when he got bigger, but this was actually um, right before the pandemic, uh, the COVID-19, we used to go to uh, Pet, Petmark or Petco. And we was going there. We say, sit right in the front of, when you go through the door, right there in the front, we were there standing for a little while. And I would ask people, do you want to pet my dog? I should have a video. I'm gonna share in the show notes where you see him, people just come in and petting him, but he has to stay in down through the whole process. He couldn't approach the people. He, he had a lot more training here now. He couldn't approach anybody, so people would approach him. He had to stay in down. We call it a petting day uh, where he has that lot of interaction with people. I hope this answered your question. Uh, if you have any, I mean, if you have any other questions, just post it on the show notes. Um, if you're watching this video, the recording of this video, you can go ahead and leave in the comments, and I will be paying attention and answer as much as I can from my experience. Okay, you're welcome. Hey, let me interact with any strangers. Exactly. Um, you don't. You don't want your dog going to the stranger. Okay. This. This. Like I said, you want the stranger to come to your dog, but it have to be under control. So you. You have to be the one who make the interaction. Um, it don't matter. It can be sitting, can be down. I prefer down because a lot of most of the time I allow little kids, children, to pet him when they ask. Okay, uh, if you don't ask and you try to pet my dog, we're gonna have a conversation. that's not gonna finish really nice because I'm gonna pull away. And it's actually um, this position right here. Let me show you really quick. 
I might, I'm gonna get a little bit farther away from the mic, so I might not, you might not hear me well. Keep calm. So, right here, um, this position. Keep so. So he continued with me. This position is actually my main position if I'm in public. So I'm gonna push back a little bit. Push back. And this right here, I hope you can hear me. Um, right here, this is going to be my position at the grocery store. So I'm waiting in line. I'm waiting this way. Uh, if you see, I mean, I have treats in my hand, but he's paying attention to me, looking at me, knowing what's going on around. Um, in this case, he's waiting for the treat. Please. Please. Come on. Please. So in this case, he's waiting for the treats. So he's looking at me a lot, but he will be looking at me like that at all times. He's, he's paying attention to me. That's this position. For me, it's my favorite because it allow, I mean, nobody wants to t pet my dog in that position. Even though he's a German Shepherd, he has this big head, big look, uh, tough, rough uh, look. People want to pet and they will try to pet my dog without my permission. Those people will never get them to pet him because they don't allow me to control the interaction. Uh, people who ask, they will, they will be willing to follow my instructions. And I will give them the instructions how to pet a dog. So I put the dog down, and they have to come to his position. He will never reach to the person. So uh, thank you for the question. And yes, definitely keep control. Always you control the situation when somebody else is petting your dog. Okay. Um, Okay, uh, this is my wife actually asking questions right here. This is Peggy. Um, it's okay to it's okay to bark at other dogs um, when when your dog is out. No, it's not okay to approach a dog. It's not okay to bark at the dog. It's not okay even to pay attention to the other dog. Your dog needs to be paying attention to you at all times and not barking at dogs, not getting distracted by nothing that's going around. Um, if you've done a good um, socialization when he's young, between two and five months, like I said, and have a really structured training, this shouldn't happen. Um, in the house, mine barks to my son's dog, actually. We have a uh, mix of German Shepherd with... Uh, Doverman and for some reason when he's in the kennel and the, all the dogs have to go through the door to go out he will bark at that dog uh, but actually if we out in the street he will never do that we are correct I'm correcting that problem I don't even know why where that problem start that he started barking only when he's in the kennel and the other dog goes through but it's not okay to um, that to happen and when he's out he never actually barks to any other dogs or even pay attention uh, we go to a park really close here. Like I said at the beginning, we're going to go actually after after this, we're going to go and play a little bit with the ball. And this other dogs to go and play to the same park. This is not a dog park. It's a regular park. And I know two dogs in particular that they like to follow him. But he will just follow, go get his ball, come back to me, and back and forward. Not even stop to get playing with other dogs, distracted. He's more attentive to play with me. And talking about playing and paying attention to you in particular, it's um, you have to have some toys, like those balls that I take to the park. He never have access to those toys. There's toys that are for him. They're running, I mean, they're on the floor in the house. That's Those are his toys. And then I have my own toys. And he only gets to play with those toys when he's with me. And those toys, as, as soon as I'm done playing with him, the toys are mine. So I put it away, and only when I bring him out, he gets to play with those. And the balls are the part of those uh, toys, and he knows if I'm not there, if he, he do something else, he's going to lose that toy, and that helps a lot to keep attention uh, to you. So let me check here in my notes what else I have. I think we've been uh, here. Let me see if I can check the time. Okay, I think we are a little bit past of the, what I have expected. Um, this sh um, this life, I wanted to do around 30 minutes twice a month. So I'm not sure if I'm going to do every mon every other Monday at 6, if this this works for you. No matter if you watching the replay, put in the comments if that time works for you. One other thing that I need help with is how to name it. Uh, my channel is a, serv a service dog club, but I want to name the life... Um, 
the live interaction with you guys something. Let's put a name to the show and let's go ahead and figure out if Mondays at six, every other Monday works for you. So go ahead and make sure I leave that in the show notes. If you have a Jamin Shepherd already, put in the show notes and I'm going to be reading these notes as days pass and I want to uh, um, talk to you guys and see what's your experience and what I, maybe I missed something. If I missed something, put in the show notes that we, we all can grow together. Okay, uh, I have here hip dysplasia being one of the illness that German Shepherds as a breed are tend to, prone to. So one more reason to look for a good breeder. I'm going really quick here through all my notes, making sure I didn't let nothing behind. We talk about Belcro dogs. I mean, they're with you uh, all, all the time. And I think I cover ev mostly everything. Um, actually, not mostly, actually everything that I have in mind to talk about uh, Jam and Shepherds or my experience with my Jam and Shepherd that's not there anymore. He's right here on the floor. There, well, there you go. There you are. Okay. So as you see, he wants to be close to me. Here's my feet. Uh, you don't have to be my. I just show you my sandals. Um, but right there, he is next to me at all times. Um, so let's go back here. So that's going to be it for today, and I hope you enjoyed. And don't forget to subscribe. I should have pressed this button right here to remind you to subscribe and like. And I totally forgot. Like I said, this is my first life. I have the comments. I thought it was going to be a lot easier to read the comments on my screen, but it, it takes me a lot of distractions. So I'm going to have to figure out if I can put it right here on the side, make it easy. And I was supposed to press this button, you see, right here, so you don't forget to subscribe. So make sure you like this video, subscribe, ring the bell, so you get notified every time we post a new video. So thank you guys. Have a blessed day. Hope you have a Merry Christmas. I mean, we passed Christmas already, but Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to all of you. And if you have any questions and I can answer from my experience, I will definitely uh, leave it in the notes and continue this conversation as we go. So take care and I'll see you next time.